Pull the beam from your own eye before you attempt to pull the splinter from your brothers. It's one of my favorite teachings, favorite parables from uh, the New Testament. And uh, it reflects or it uh, demonstrates, if you understand it, the nature of the single principle of all spiritual work, of all spiritual inquiry. It uh, keeps the finger firmly on the nose that the beam is in my own eye. And uh, if you're a student of A Course in Miracles or a teacher of A Course in Miracles, which is the same thing, student and teacher is, uh, you teach to learn. It's the opposite of teaching and learning in the world. Um, the sole responsibility, right, Jesus says this very clearly in the course, the sole responsibility of the miracle worker. And if you don't consider yourself a miracle worker, you better think again. <laughs> because the whole point of... Uh, the exercise of undergoing the transformation of your entire consciousness is that you see the miracles or the divine nature of your being expressed through the miraculous and the, sometimes the phenomena of um, grace through your own hands and through the transformation of your own thinking, which you witness to, of course, in the cause and effect relationships uh, that you find yourself in. Every relationship. So the sole responsibility for the miracle worker is to accept atonement at one moment for themselves. Pull the beam from your own eye before you attempt to pull the splinter from your brothers. It's literally a teaching that leads to the retraining of the mind in a way where the posture of judge not becomes the status quo. What I think I see in someone else is simply the reflection of my own projection, my own ego projected outward because I don't want to look at it. I don't want to accept atonement for myself because the nature of all things on earth is oneness. The nature of all things on earth is um, divine but the experience that we come to with our unillumined minds uh, when we are born seemingly born into this place even though it's just a dream you're not really born into this place um, it's separation and so we find ourselves or I find myself finger on my nose <laughs> I find myself circumscribed by a human life where I seem to be separate from everyone and everything and within that framework it's given me to undertake a new purpose a true purpose to reconcile the nature of um, my heart and mind to bring them together under the auspices of that new purpose which let's call it healing um, so that I can indeed accept atonement at one moment for myself and come to the full understanding of the nature of all things as being one on earth as they are in heaven so pulling the beam from my own eye is taking total responsibility for what i think i see in someone else 
how would I know what I think I see in someone else unless it's an idea in my own mind, unless my thought system is telling me, my way of thinking is telling me about something that I think is out there that I should be judging and trying to fix or change or defend myself against, etc. How would I know any of that unless it was going on in my own head? <laughs> unless I was listening to something that was uh, primarily and only designed to deceive me, to keep me in the experience of separation where one thing seems to be separate from another and uh, oneness seems to be nothing but a lofty idea. Admirable perhaps, admirable perhaps, but hardly uh, practical. There's a beautiful little uh, rabbit down there, and I can't, uh, don't know if you guys can see it. But, uh, if I were to give it a meaning, I would say it's the symbolic representation of my gentleness. <laughs> oh, scared away by a pump or a lawnmower. So, <clears throat> the idea then of accepting one at oneness for myself on earth is the ongoing process of keeping my finger on my nose. Every time I think someone or something is doing something outside of me or someone's treating me in a way that I don't deserve or why is this happening to me, why did that person do something? And I've made several videos about using the mirror or the reflection of your own denial. And uh, the idea or the concept of the mirror right, embodies the principle of atonement. It's like there's nothing I see outside of myself that isn't me. Right? And that takes a lot. That takes a lot of confrontation. It takes a lot of willingness to deep dive into the heart and to find the prayer to ask to be shown the nature of the truth regarding that statement. I am one with all things as above, so below. In eternity, so on earth. And I say eternity rather than heaven because uh, eternity is the state um, of non-temporal being, if you like, and uh, heaven is a state of mind on earth, which we achieve through the purification or the transformation of the mind. Using the mirror then, the mirror of, uh, or the reflection of our own denial or the shadow, you can call it shadow work or mirror work, it's the same thing exactly. I like the idea of the mirror. That's how it first came to me. I think I've mentioned that before too. Maybe I'm just doing a complete repeat or maybe there's only this one time because there is only this now moment <laughs> and everything else is just a memory. That is actually how it is. This moment is all I have to be in love, to feel that love and to extend that love through feeling it, allowing myself to receive that I might give without any condition on the giving. That's the best you're going to get as a divine expression on earth, to give all to all. <laughs> in which case you will recognize the all of your giving. Looking in the mirror then takes some willingness to expand one's mind and one's concept and one's idea, my idea, about what I think oneness is or about what I think oneness entails. Because there are things in the world that, and I have to caveat this, there are things in the world, if I react to them, all right, this is where honesty comes in. If I react, it's mine. If I have a judgment about it, it's mine. I've got to own it. I've got to take responsibility for it. You wouldn't react at all to anything if you truly knew this was a dream. You would simply be in the world, but not of it. And I would simply be in the world, but not of it. See how tricky that is? Your finger slips off. My finger slips off my nose. <laughs> uh, it's funny. 
Yeah. So in that willingness to expand my mind regarding what I think life is on Earth, it seems at first that it's confined to the notion of this avatar, this body, this flesh, and then in the expression, in the divine expression of it, as some time passes through the process of transformation, there comes this maturity in the mind where I realize, finger on my nose, I am simply the expression of that divinity appearing as uh, whatever it is you want me to be. And that depends upon your own purpose. And I have some people in the comments will go, what a lot of rubbish this guy's talking about. And other people that will just as uh, equally say, isn't this fantastic? Thank God I've found this video. And uh, either way, I'm totally grateful for either of those comments because uh, everything is either a blessing or a lesson. And if I react to the negative ones or if I react with pride to the positive ones, then there are still its healings required. My fingers still needs to stay on my nose. But uh, in the willingness to be helpful, there's this kind of uh, moment where I have to realize that uh, I don't want to cast my pearls before swine. And uh, there are simply those at this time and place in the, in the uh, grand scheme of things who are not ready for these teachings. And there are those who are, so uh, better to give your time and energy to those who are ready and who are willing to simply allow in or accept in whatever it is that's being presented without that defensive uh, dipping a toe in the water kind of uh, mentality if you're not ready i'm not here to explain it to you <laughs> there are plenty of books you can go and read and plenty of workshops you can do and things like that um so in the idea of expanding from the sense, the separated sense of the avatar association to the entire universe and the multiverse association, the mind is continually opening, opening, opening to include in a greater array or a greater acceptance of um, what is presented, even in the face of the resistance to want to do that. And a lot of things will show up. In fact, everything you've denied about yourself will show up in this world in symbolic form to um, give you that opportunity. Uh, I'm not the I'm not the rapist. I'm not the murderer, etc. It's like, well, yes, you are. If you see it, you are. That idea, because form is a representation of idea, that idea exists somewhere in the mind as an idea of time and space, as an idea of the temporal association of life rather than the divine association of life. And it has to be healed in the mind, in my mind, uh, on a conscious level, on a singular personal level, uh, to bring this association that's uh, utilising this avatar um, into alignment with the greater good at the highest vibratory uh, resonance possible so and of course that is entirely possible because there is no limitation in the miracle <laughs> learning to become dependent on the divine is really quite joyous and uh, makes everything very easy but of course on this side of it looking at the reasonability for wanting to do that for wanting to take on board that I am the murderer and I am the whatever it is the the controller and all of this sort of stuff some of those reflections can be emotionally charged and uh, especially if you've had a traumatic experience or if I've had a traumatic experience through this avatar of something that um, perhaps I have sworn never to forgive. So, as St. Francis of Assisi would say, um, each of us must come to love God and to represent God to the greatest of our capacity. And you're not being told that you have to perform um, a miracle or to confront fear if it is actually fearful for you to recognize something like that. You're being told to simply open your mind and heart to the Holy Spirit and allow that work to be done through you by the grace of God. And that will always look like a release. That will always look like because it's a cellular reassociation, it's a cellular transformation, a cellular ascension, 
Um, it's always going to look like, because the body's included, everything's included, remember? I'm not separate from anything, Dave. <laughs> um, it's always going to look like the uh, reinterpretation of the defences that maintain the temporal association, which is always going to require a release, a release of those old defences or the old ideas holding those defences in place. And as that occurs, each to their own capacity, um, the transformation follows suit. Right? So uh, if you still, for example, or if I still, for example, think that there are good things in this world that uh, perhaps I'm not willing to offer to the Holy Spirit, then I'm only offering the half-hearted endeavour of my own commitment to myself. When Jesus says, give up the world and follow me, he means give up the entirety of the world. It's like this world is not your home. He says that in the Bible, in the New Testament. And where I am going, you will come too. Even though at the moment it's not your time, but you will understand when the Holy Spirit comes upon you. <laughs> Having had a realization that uh, 2,000 odd years ago, I was there um, at the crucifixion. And I am going to guess at the resurrection um, it's taken me a little minute to catch up and to realize what was being spoken about and what was being presented and uh, now I understand give up the world and follow me means exactly that the world is not our home and that's all that any teacher any student can uh, teach and learn So having it broken down to the simplicity of accepting atonement, let me accept atonement for myself in this situation, in that situation, is uh, that's cool, it's really good, you know, like you begin the workbook, you do those lessons, or perhaps you've got a teacher who's helping you with that, and or maybe you're using these videos or other videos, etc. Um, and all external teaching aids should be taken on board that they ought to be temporary and and temporary is you know make make that temporariness as expedient as possible if if that's understood you don't want to be uh, hanging off somebody's shirt tails for years and years it's like use what you need to use get what you need to get and then get on with it and uh, to that regard anyone who has a, a heartfelt passion for this it's like man use me for whatever you can it's like there's no limit to my ability to offer you what it is that comes through me but um, at a certain point you have to realize for yourself it's like all right I've got to do this myself <laughs> just as there was a certain point when I was sitting with my teacher Ted every day for six years there was a few there was a few periods in that time where I went out and uh, took books and other brothers and we went and did some uh, what do you call that missionary work or something I don't really know around the country but generally every day for six years but at about the three year point I realized I was done I realized that it was on my shoulders now and uh, the healing center became more of a home base where I could go out and back from and uh, begin to offer this from the place where I was at with it in my own in my own heart space right? with my own passion for it how that's going to look for you will be uh, entirely according to your own script your own arrangement your own capacity So every day is an opportunity. Every day brings an opportunity to look into the mirror, sometimes in retrospect and sometimes when it's in my face and uh, you can't escape it, the confrontation with any of the slightest little disturbance to that peace of mind is, uh, oh, hello, is uh, grist for the mill. So my friends are here flown down to say good day. These are butcher birds. 
meat eaters. Nothing wrong with that. Everything has its own uh, part to play. That's for the vegetarians. <laughs> um, so every day brings an opportunity. Some of those opportunities seem to be quite minimal, just minor disturbances to the peace of mind, and some of them are absolutely bring outrage and uh, hatred and anger and uh, all that sort of stuff. And they're the juicy ones. I really like the big ones, although I don't like, I have to be honest, I don't, <laughs> I don't like the confrontation. After all these years, I still don't like it. I enjoy the, how would you put it? I enjoy the knowing that the confrontation is the opportunity for going beyond the limitation that it represents <laughs> in my own mind. But at the same time, still, even to this day, all of these years later, it's still kind of like, oh. <laughs> and I'm, I'm beginning to think you don't ever get beyond that, you know, like, Jesus says in the course, you must think of yourself as a crusader. And um, this is the, he, oh, that's right. He calls it, this is the last crusade. You must think of yourself as a crusader. And the motto of the crusade is to listen, learn, and do. And the doing is important. It's the doing that's the component that brings the change. So it's one thing to, to listen and to hear the guidance and to learn what it is that, are, that needs to be done. But if you don't actually do it, and sometimes that can be very humbling. If you don't actually do it, nothing changes at all. And you find yourself being presented with the same lesson further down the track, perhaps in another form or the same thing coming around again. But you'll recognise it by the energy and you'll be like, not this again, I thought I'd dealt with this. Which is why the idea of the mirror then is very handy. Hello, Kevin. They don't usually come up this close, the butcher birds. They're quite timid. This one's just an arm's length. They're probably quite curious about who this person is in their orchard. I've been here, for, made a few videos here now in this corner of the orchard and uh, different birds seem to come up to me at different times. It was magpies and uh, currawongs the other day, and today it's butcher birds. So. <sighs> yeah, he's beautiful. There we go. There's another one behind me in the tree. I see him just there. Very lovely. So allowing then for the fact that the mirror never lies, never lies. It allows me to fall with some element of grace and some element of clumsiness into the confrontation. Oh, hello, you're very close. Okay. It allows me to fall into a confrontation with myself, a confrontation with my honesty, with my integrity, and to, I guess, refuse to look away, refuse to adjust, refuse to run from my reflection, from what it is I think is outside of me that's making me feel, or I think is making me feel a certain way. And uh, there's nothing, the realisation that there's nothing outside of me ever making me feel a certain way because I'm looking at myself, my whole self, not the avatar self, my whole mind self. Wherever I go, that which I attribute to the avatar, which I perhaps in my ignorance think is the, the worthy and the noble and the good, and that also which I've projected out from my mind, which I don't want to look at, which is the unworthy, the, the bad and the negative of uh, what I think prevails in here as my conscious thinking, as my conscious ideas about things. And uh, 
it's understandable to not want to look at some of those thoughts and to instead project them out into the world where they get picked up and played out by the form associations of my projection, of my manifestation. Because some of them are just horrible. <laughs> this world is a very poor home for a divine child, a very poor environment to... Uh, in fact, Jesus says this world is not your home, which is, which is why you feel like you don't belong. You don't fit in. You're the black sheep of your family and uh, perhaps you feel something ever so small in the back like there's something not right here. Well, this is why it's not right. You're not from here. You're not this body. And uh, it's not that you have the option of being not the body you have to accept and ground yourself in the idea that the body is yes the body is what I think I am otherwise you just transcend the situation which is spiritual bypassing rather than owning the situation the body is what I think I am that's why I continue to react to things because it's a defense of protecting what I think it is that I am my reactions are literally my defense against love because love is everything as above, so below. But in this world, we witness to that. I witness to that. <laughs> Through letting go of my defences and allowing in a moment of faith my heart to be opened and uh, assailed, if you like, or confronted by whatever it is that uh, I'm tempted to do this with when I take my finger off my nose and you did this, you did that and it's like, oh, I've asked you to play that part I've manifested you into my dream to play that part for me to show me what it is that I've been thinking and have projected out there in denial of my whole state on earth the good stuff and the ugly stuff thank you for playing that part for me, dear brother and I will heal you from that part now by healing my own mind of my judgments about you, about that part, about myself in relationship to it. Because I choose instead, whether you've had an experience or not, I choose instead to accept that I am one with all things. I choose to accept atonement, at one for myself in this situation instead of uh, accepting the... Uh, relative truth of my judgments about things here which simply perpetuates the lesson so include everything in include in the body yes i think i'm a body it's not my truth but obviously it's what i think i am because here i am <laughs> when the lesson is learned the body will no longer be seen. When the lesson is learned, the body can be laid aside gratefully as uh, something that has uh, fulfilled its use and uh, been a useful instrument. And uh, that moment is here and now, and also that moment is whenever it was according to the divine orchestration of your own uh, process or your own awakening sequence that came to you and has come to you through your own individual collaboration with the resurrection with the atonement of which Jesus is in charge <laughs> so take his hand and walk with him <laughs> and don't let go <laughs> And if you do let go, grab a hold of it again. <laughs> and don't worry about it. I've cursed Jesus a few times and he's got broader shoulders than me. And I've had people curse me. I often tell people, you know, I had a, I had somebody call me a, what was it? Yesterday I was looking through some comments. I've been called everything by those, you know, by the swine and by the, by the devotee alike. Uh, projecting onto me the uh, resistance to accepting the, the the atonement and that's fine it's like I'm totally happy with that I'm totally happy I had somebody call me yesterday and think some crackhead spiritual teachers you know this is just another one of those crackhead spiritual teachers and uh, 
I'm aware that that's a, a quite a common expression now in uh, in consciousness, at least in my country. Some a crackhead, I think, is somebody that uh, not specifically uses the drug crack, but just somebody that doesn't fit in or doesn't perform according to expectation or something. I'd have to look in the Urban Dictionary. Crackhead, just a general fuck-up, I think. <laughs> yep, that's me. I'm all of it. I'm, I'm everything. And I often tell people, man, you are going to hate me before you love me. You're going to hate me. And in a matter of fact, if you don't hate me, you'll never come to love me. Because what it is you're going to see in me is going to be the total hatred that you have for yourself. And that might be... Uh, somewhat confronting to hear me say that and maybe it doesn't even register yet maybe you're still in this you're still in the um, the honeymoon stage where you're so grateful to have found uh, something useful as I was at the time that um, you're only hearing on a very very small level at this stage and that's fine everybody everybody enters in where they enter in but just try and remember one day when I told you that <laughs> so that when you do get angry at me and you do hate me and you do want to cut off my head and, and all of these funny things as, as the avatar um, you can remember oh wait a minute you told me this would happen <laughs> and I say that with all the love all the love in the universe I'm offering you that total love from my heart about that so um in the course in the fear of redemption if you've got the old blue book i don't know what it is in the sparkly edition but in the fear of redemption that mower does not sound healthy but in the um in the fear of redemption in the blue book the original uh, course in miracles book or they call it the original one um it says something like i think the first line you must look upon your hatred and realize its full extent you must look upon your hatred and realize its full extent and if you're a spiritual person you're probably going to try and tell me um, either oh I don't have any hatred or I don't have any ego like that I've, I've done that and uh, well that may be well and true but I guarantee you you'll know it if you've done it you'll know it if you've been through that because uh, it's the wish to kill. It's the wish to kill the crisis, the wish to kill your brother, the wish to deny life as it appears. <laughs> Just offered that lawnmower a miracle and there it goes again. <laughs> <laughs> there's nothing nothing that isn't an idea in my mind anyway that's enough for today i love you peace and tomorrow is the zoom so if you haven't yet contact tina in the details down below she'll send you the link add you to the group etc etc and uh, over and out